top headlines for the week end on May 19. President David Granger attending Arab summit to counter terrorism. Jack Dio calls for users of small quantities of marijuana not to be jailed. Linden Town Council needs 200 million bailout from government. Rose Isle sugar workers stage mass protest against estate's closure. Seaman found dead with gunshot to the back of his head. Welcome to MTV News Updates Week in Review for the week ending May 12th. I'm Trish Ramla. Good afternoon. President David Granger will be meeting with other world leaders at the Arab Islamic American Summit in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to discuss possible security partnerships to counter the growing threat of terrorism. President David Granger will be attending the Arabic Islamic American Summit in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia on May 21 in the city of Riyadh. This is according to Minister of State Joseph Harmon. Also, of course, the question of uh, the global threat uh, posed by terrorism and issues in that regard will also be dealt with. Harmon says the summit will bring together world leaders to address ways of building more robust security and effective partnerships to counter and prevent the growing threat of terrorism. Violent extremism around the globe will also be addressed by promoting tolerance and moderation. In addition to this, President of the United States, Donald Trump, is also expected to attend the summit. But what I do know is that the issues in relation to the Islamic Development Bank and the loans and facilities that are available uh, to Guyana will be part of the, the engagements. According to Harmon, accommodation, meals and internal travel in the country for the head of state and his delegation of four will be financed by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Due to the alleged vindictive attack to remove an elected member of the Guyana Public Service Union Board, its members have taken to the street to block her removal. The unionized workers held a peaceful picket outside the Ministry of Natural Resources around noon today. Find out more in this report. <laughs> Chairman of the Ghana Geologian Mines Commission Branch No. 72, Gregory Gasper says the Ghana Public Service Union is trying to remove its representative from the board. Gasper explained that the member has been representing the interests of the unionized workers of GGMC well over two decades. Yes, the workers rep that was elected by the workers. Right? All the years that person has been sitting on the board. And this year they have decided that they will not accommodate that person. Gasper noted that since the election which were held in April, several changes have been taking place at the union. He contends that the results which follow the final results from the election officer is null and void. No, he hasn't contacted myself as yet, to my knowledge. Because he hasn't contacted me or sent any documentation to me. The chairman of branch number 72 is optimistic that today's demonstration is one way of getting the attention of the Ministry of Natural Resources to intervene. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Following a massive increase of subvention for the Help and Shelter Crisis Service Center, a 5% salary increase was granted to all staff. The Help and Shelter Crisis Service Center was allocated a major increase from its usual $10 million to a whooping $31 million. This is according to Coordinator of Help and Shelter, Margaret Kurtzius. We are able to um, include part of that subvention at the Crisis Service Center to assist in the um, staff salary. The center last year cried out for monetary assistance due to staff at the facility not being paid to perform their duties as their salaries were not catered for under the subvention. Subsequently, with a timely contribution of international donor funds, the staffs were able to uplift their remunerations. According to Curtius, the facility sees about 20 new clients monthly, with most of them suffering from domestic violence. However, serious cases desirous of accommodation to referral from a counselor will be facilitated at the shelter. When the woman decides to leave the environment, the abusive environment, 
she goes to the shelter and she could stay there for as long as six months six months is the maximum period and after then it depends on if she doesn't have any way to go that situation is looked at and it could be extended the center which caters for about 48 persons presently houses 12 adults and 20 children sandy ramutar for mtv's news update a warning has been issued by the Government Analyst Food and Drug Department against the purchase of those plate and barley, which has been packed and distributed by Gitanjali Rai Guyana. And in our investigations, we were able to reveal that the DUST does barley, is adulterated, is adulterated. it is not patent barley as the label stated. Yeah, we would have done a microscopic analysis where we would have compared the sample to reference material and that is how we would be able to analyze and come to the conclusion that it's adulterated. The mayor and town council of Linden owes over $200 million to various companies, monies that have accumulated over the years. It is against this backdrop that the mayor of Linden, Carwin Holland, is asking the government to bail out to the council. The bauxite mining town of Linden is asking for a bailout from the government as it has a debts outstanding that have been accumulated during the time of the past the council. Mayor of Linden, Carwin Holland, said that over $200 million is needed to take them out of the crisis. He also said that the other towns have been granted their request many times and is asking that the same be done for Linden. Right now we need, um, we did, uh, we need over $200 million. We need a bailout. A bailout. We inherited over, when we came into office, a very young group, enthusiastic group of councillors staring us down was over $200 plus million plus um, in red, you know. And we're faced with that um, until today. However, we've started to um, make little payments towards that. We are indebted to NIS, GRE, and um, you know several persons. And it is a it is a, um, a monkey on our backs, which we need to get off. He also said that a letter was sent to the Ministry of Communities requesting the sum, and he is awaiting a response. Um, I did send a letter asking. Uh, for the bailout, all right, and um, it's something that uh, we are, are going to be awaiting um, answers. The Ministry of Communities uh, would have received um, that request, and so we're going to await um, word on that. However, in November 2016, the Mayor and the City Council had requested $600 million from the government, claiming that they are cash-trapped and needed the funds to pay workers in December. The request was denied. The People's Progressive Party believes alternative sentencing should be applicable to users of small quantity of cannabis instead of sending them behind bars for years. This came on the grounds of users of small quantities of marijuana being sentenced to years in prison, explained General Secretary of the PPP, Barak Jagdio. He labeled it as unfair compared to large drug traffickers who are given limited sentencing to legal representation. And so we were saying that if we can, if you find people with extremely small quantities who are for personal use, not trafficking, then you should, um, then we should find alternative sentencing. According to him, Community service or time spent at rehabilitation centers can be used as alternatives for the said offense. He also reflected on his party's 2015 manifesto, which listed the decriminalization of small quantities of marijuana. According to him, this would have materialized following input from other party members. Moreover, with mounting calls for the cultivation of industrial hemp, Chagdu says he believes it can be used as an industrial crop. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update.
following speculations about the location for the flag raising ceremony on Independence Day, the Department of Culture has announced that the event will remain at Dorban Park. Guyana's 51st, the celebration of being an independent nation, will commence on May 21 to May 27. The flag raising ceremony will remain at Durban Park. This will see the collaboration of key ministries and the police. The week's activities will start with a parade for the Youth Week, with the conclusion of a housing expo at the Perseverance on May 29 for students. Minister within the Ministry of Education, Nicolette Henry, said that the government vows to have big celebrations every five years. But I also want to point out um, from a policy level, as a government we've taken a position that every five years we're going to have big celebrations. So we've had a big celebration last year because it was 50th, and so the next big anniversary celebration would be five years from last year. Deputy Commander of A Division, Kevin Adonis, says that the Traffic, Criminal Investigation Department and the Special Branch Ranks will handle the security aspect for the flag raising event. The police role is to provide security and traffic arrangement for all the activities that leads up to the flag raising ceremony being the 25th of this month, May 2017. Our intention is to ensure that persons are safe and secure to and fro from the venue. Hence, police will be deployed, both general duty, the CID, special branch, and traffic ranks to provide the security and traffic arrangement that the citizens deserve. Director of National Events, Lieutenant Colonel Godfrey Bess, also added that fireworks will be a part of the program for the flag raising ceremony. A major battle looms for the coalition government if the president fails to select a chairman for the Guyana Elections Commission for the second list of nominees sent to him by the opposition leader. The opposition party is least bothered about the time taken by the head of state to deliver a response to the second list of nominees submitted by the Leader of the Opposition to Chair of the Guyana Elections Commission, GCOM. This is according to General Secretary of the People's Progressive Party, Marat Jagdiu. He is confident the President will be able to select a person from the list as five of the six names presented bears the necessary preferences indicated by him. According to the General Secretary, a major fight looms against the head of state if he chooses to do different. In addition to this, he says it would be extremely unreasonable for the president to reject a second set of names as it is in keeping with the president's criteria. I'm waiting. I've not heard anything as yet. I don't want to speculate. But if, if as what some people are saying that the president wants to appoint a person on his own, well, he'd have a major fight on his hands. A second list of names were submitted to the president on May 2, following his rejection of the first list, which he deemed unconstitutional based on the nominee's qualification. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Former President Bar Jagdeo is the architect of modern Guyana after he built on the foundations laid by Dr. Chedi Jagan. This is the rhetoric being dispelled by the opposition party. Speaking exclusively with a news update, opposition parliamentarian Juan Egil said that Guyana would not have been developed if Bharat Jagdeo had not been the president. Egil stated that Jagdeo capitalized on the foundations set by Dr. Chedi Jagan, which is responsible for elevating Guyana from being a poor country. This is how he described the former president and the current opposition leader. Dr. Barrett Jagdeo can be viewed as the architect of modern Guyana by the policies that he would have implemented following up on those that were laid by Dr. Chedi Jagan and Mrs. Jana Jagan. Tooting the People's Progressive Party's horn, the parliamentarian laid out the strides the PPP government made in the 23 years in government, which encompassed the five presidents, Dr. Chedi Jagan, Janet Jagan, Samuel Hines, 
Barra Jack Bill and Donald Ramatar. We took this country when it was bankrupt, unable to pay its debt burden, unable to repair infrastructure, unable to attend to social services, unable to bring well-being to the Guyanese people. We turned it around. However, as Edgel promotes the highlights of Jack Dio's presidency, the latter is embroiled in the Pradoville 2 scandal. He, along with a host of PPP members, has been hauled in at the Special Organized Crime Unit, SOCU, in connection to the purchasing of lands at Pradoville 2, lands which were said to have been grossly undervalued. Godfrey Brooms, MTV, News Update. The U.S. State Department has released its 2017 International Narcotics Control Strategy Report, which stated that Guyana continues to be an attractive country for both human and drug trafficking. Details in this report. The report stated that Guyana continues to be a transit country for a South American cocaine destined for Europe, the United States, Canada, West Africa and the Caribbean. In the report, it was highlighted that many criminals use cash couriers or familiar networks to move large sums of money between Guyana and the United States. Unregulated currency exchange houses also pose a risk as they are used both for the exchange of currency and to transfer funds to and from the diaspora. Additionally, casinos are legal in Guyana and pose a risk for money laundering. However, Guyana has one casino. The report stated that the primary sources of laundered funds are believed to be narcotics trafficking and corruption. However, the laundering of proceeds from other illicit activities such as human trafficking, contraband, illegal natural resource extraction, and tax evasion is substantial. In 2013, the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force issued a public statement noting significant strategic deficiencies in Guyana's anti-money laundering regime and declaring Guyana a money laundering risk to the international financial system. Subsequently, the government created an action plan to address noted deficiencies and in mid-2015 passed amendments to update its AML legislation. In 2016, the CFATF removed Guyana from its public statement. Although AML legislation gives the Financial Intelligence Unit authority to investigate alleged money laundering, the unit does not have the capacity to conduct such investigations. Instead, the Special Organized Crime Unit SOKU investigates those cases referred to it by the FIU. Additionally, lack of cooperation by the business community also hinders Ghana's AML efforts. However, the State Department recognizes the work of SOKU, which seized approximately $80,000 worth of local and foreign currency and arrested two persons suspected of money laundering. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. A massive number of sugar workers once again demonstrated their strong opposition to the plan by the government and the Guyana Sugar Corporation to close Rosal Estate by year end. <laughs> was the scene this morning as workers continue to struggle through protest action joined by housewives, business persons, students and pensioners at Rose Hall Babies. This follows the decision by the coalition to keep only three of the six existing sugar estates come 2018. According to a statement from the Guyana Agricultural and General Workers Union GAU, the government's plan for sugar has triggered a spate of protest in the sugar belt as workers phantom the dark consequences of closure. The protesters also demonstrated fear that their peaceful communities would be destroyed, families displaced, and there will be increased incidences of crime and other social ills. <laughs> Stand up, walk in front of the fight. Reach your 
Japanese Vice President Harvey Tamron explained how the decision will affect workers. This area here has no opportunity for other work besides the game business. Working in the industry in the sugar belt is all that most of the sugar workers know of. They know how to cut the cane and weed the grass and fertilize the cane and to work in the factory. They are not skilled people that can go out and market themselves. So the government ought to take this into consideration. While the workers were not prepared for such a plan from the government, Tambron noted workers will continue to pick it as they will not give in to the closure of more estates. This is an issue of bread and butter for the people, for the workers, their families, people who will be affected are higher car drivers, vendors in the market, the small business people, the large business people, school children, sugar workers and their immediate family. They will be destroyed. They will have separation in homes. Rose Hall Estate, according to data from Gaisuku, employs some 2,300 workers and assuming a family size of four, about 10,000 persons of the country's population will be directly impacted by the closer decision. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. A 28-year-old man was discovered in a pool of blood with a shot to the back of his head. The man was shot execution style and left sprawling in a pool of blood on a parapet in Roxanne Barnum Gardens. Details in this report. There is 28-year-old Roy Rowland of Castello Housing Scheme, La Penitence, Georgetown. Roland's body was discovered approximately 6 hours 30 this morning on the eastern parapet of Marigold Street, Roxanne Barnum Gardens. The police in a statement said a 9mm spanchel was found at the scene. Roland's body bore a gunshot wound to the back of his head. A cousin of the deceased believes that Roland was murdered and his body was dumped along the roadway. The woman said a stranger came and told them about the discovery and she went and identified the body. I won't be able to say. The police have to do investigation. Also his friends them, the last person we saw Roy with, that we know that he leave home with. What is his name, mommy? Anybody know his name? Kizel Edwards. Edwards. He was the last person. Yes. Ashard. Yes, last night he leave 25 Castillo and he went about. This is the last person that we know him with. From there, the police will do the investigation. Roland, who was working as a seaman, leaves to mourn his wife, son, and an unborn child. An investigation has been launched to ascertain what may have led to the murder. No one has been arrested up to press time. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Food inspectors are calling for security personnel to be present when products are being destroyed, as mandated by the government analyst food and drug department. This call is being made as the inspectors claim that pickers normally removed the products before they are destroyed at the dump sites. Lack of adequate protection has caused pickers to cart off with products before they are destroyed. This is according to Deputy Director of the Government Analyst Food and Drug Department. Joel Sears. According to her, two inspectors are usually sent at point of sale sites or if necessary dump sites in cases where expired or spoiled goods are mandated to be destroyed. However, inspectors are faced with the presence of pickers who often appear at the sites to seal goods, using it for sale or consumption purposes. Yes, in, a, um, in addition to, to the protection as sh um, for inspections, particularly at point of sales that are at the marketplaces, um, they the, the need adequate staff um, to be able to cover the country of food safety, the food safety program of the country. For we look at man, if we look at um, those who import, distribute, sell, as well as manufacture. Another worrying issue is insufficient inspectors. This has caused the department to be unable to inspect each business premises. Meanwhile, the department has been clamping down on products which pose threats to consumers' health. Sandy Ramotar for MTV's News Update. That's a wrap for MTV News Updates Week in Review. 
The newscast can be viewed online on our MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. Join us Monday, May 22 for another edition of MTV News Update. On behalf of our news team, I am Trisha Ramlal thanking you for watching.